Hello there and welcome to Fully Charged. I've just uh, driven back from London. I'm on my way back home. It's about 100 miles. I've just stopped off at the fast charger uh, to give myself a little top up. Um, it, you know, it was debatable whether I really truly need it. I live 32 miles from here and the mile thingy was, was saying 29 and there's a lot of hills so I didn't really want to do it. But uh, now I've got 80 miles so it's not a problem um, and that took, uh, I think, 11 minutes to uh, to recharge that, so I've had a coffee. So, now, this episode is not about the Nissan Leaf, it's about the Vauxhall Ampera. England this morning, it was a beautiful hot sunny day and I came to Holland and it's absolutely tipping it down, it's very grim. But this is the first drive I've ever had in the full production version of the Vauxhall Ampera. Now there was a time when I would have said otherwise known as the uh, GM Volt, but they are subtly different. They've actually been developed in, one's been developed in Europe, the Ampera, and one's been developed in America, so there's subtle differences. It is actually a European developed petrol engine in this car and it is a different chassis and it's different suspension and it, you know but some of the things they've combined so the battery technology and the battery management stuff that's the same but there are some differences and at the moment I've only driven it a few kilometers and it is it is a lovely car to drive and I'm just checking that I'm going right around the very nice sat nav which is really good so just to explain this is a range extended electric vehicle it has a petrol engine under the bonnet petrol engine isn't running at the moment because I have 44 kilometers of range on electric battery on the on the batteries batteries are lithium iron they're right down the center of the car and across the back and it goes any speed you want to go in it you can easily break the speed limit on the electric mode uh, you do plug it in overnight it only takes about four hours to charge it will cost about 60 or 70 P on with off-peak electricity to charge it to drive roughly it's basically between 40 and 50 miles uh, on a charge and then once if you're carrying on driving further than that then the petrol engine starts turns a generator generates electricity which runs the motor it doesn't charge the battery it runs the motor so it's a range extended electric vehicle which means you could drive a total at the moment because it's got a full tank 487 kilometers in this car without stopping so i've just had a, seen a presentation for this car and they're obviously very proud of it and very pleased with it and they think that it's it fills a vital niche in the automotive firmament. And I think they're probably right because there's so many people who are interested in the concept of driving an electric vehicle, uh, but they, they just think that it will run out on the road and they'll be stuck in the rain like this in the middle of nowhere and they won't be able to charge it and they'll have to wait 97 hours to charge it and all those things. Well, this car immediately removes all that. You just pull into a petrol station, you fill it with petrol, you carry it, and you could drive for a week that and you don't have to plug it in it will still work if you don't plug it in however I think when people have these cars and they start driving them because this car has a lot of oomph when it's an electric only mode it has a, a powerful motor and I'm going to post all the statistics of the motor and everything to do with it on this video because I get criticized for not giving you all the data I've got all the data I just can't remember it while I'm driving but it, it will go it's got a lot of welly I'm not going to do it at the moment because I'm being overtaken by a police vehicle but it has got plenty of oomph. Uh, and I think a lot of people will realize, oh, I drive 40 miles to work, I'll charge it at work, I'll drive 40 miles back, I'll never buy petrol. And I think what it will do is, is show to people that you can use an electric vehicle and you can use it to drive an enormous distance in it and you never use, you never use petrol. And that, that's certainly what uh, Vauxhall are, are assuming, that a lot of people will find that they'll buy some petrol at the weekend when they go and visit Granny. Or they'll buy some petrol once a year when they go on holiday because you can drive anywhere in Europe in this car effectively. It has some really clever features I really liked, which is, uh, you, say you live in a suburb, but the center of your city has a zero emission zone. They don't exist yet, but they're coming, believe me, which means no one with a car that spews stuff out the back can go in. You can drive this car using the petrol engine to get you to the edge of the, in the uh, zero, uh, zero emission zone and then switch it on to battery. So you save your batteries till you get to your destination, which I think is really clever and clearly the way that a lot of these vehicles are going to go in the future. So that in the center of a city where the pollution is 
really affecting human beings. London being a classic example, one of the, it's in the top 10 dirtiest air cities in Europe. Um, that would make a huge difference if you weren't allowed to, it's not a congestion zone about getting stuck in traffic jams, it's a emission zone. You can't emit anything. You can do a fart joke. So, that, <laughs> it, it gives you indications off the dashboard of how, how much energy you're using. I managed to keep the spinning ball right in the middle for this whole drive so far. I'm very proud of that. Um, it has uh, regenerative braking, it has all the things that you'd expect in an electric car. Uh, and a lot of advantages, so it's a, it's a hard one to argue against them. Uh, maybe the, one of the arguments is it is very complicated. There's effectively three motors under the bonnet. There's a petrol engine, there's an electric generator slash motor, and there's a big motor, a big powerful motor. And, the, and there's a planetary gear system that is complicated and big and quite hefty. So there's a lot of complex, brilliant. So that might be one argument against it, is that it is mechanically complex, and when things are mechanically complex, they might as often happens, go a bit wrong. We don't know that yet. I'm sure they won't. I'm sure it's really well done. The maintenance costs will be much lower because the petrol engine is probably going to be running, for, for a lot of drivers, the petrol engine in this car will be running for like 10% of the time it's being driven. So the petrol engine's barely being used. It's just sitting there. And that could be an argument against it because at the moment I'm driving along in, a, in this car, it's battery powered, and I'm carrying a big heavy engine that isn't doing anything. So there's a lot of extra weight there. So that it's a complex argument and I just think people are going to drive this car and go yes this is the one for me I want an electric car most of the time which this would be but when I drive up to see granny in Aberdeen I can use the same car so it's you know it's got some very big pluses in the tick box the minus is if you just use it 99% of the time as an electric car why have a great big petrol engine under the bonnet that you're carrying around with you or fuel in the tank in the back which is heavy you know I don't know a lot of people who haven't seen it or haven't driven this car already love it which is a very good sign and very good news for Vauxhall because it means they'll sell them they cost twenty eight and a half thousand pounds so they're more expensive than the leaf that is including the government grant of five thousand pounds so effectively they're around thirty two and a bit thirty three thousand quid uh, without the grant so they're expensive they're much more expensive than the say an equivalent size pure diesel or petrol car. Very interesting thing that they mentioned this morning was that the batteries are have a warranty for eight years or a hundred thousand miles, uh, which I think gives you a lot of confidence that they are very confident that their batteries will last for a hundred thousand miles. So the, the cost price of buying this car is around twenty eight twenty eight and a half thousand pounds, uh, which is obviously not cheap. But uh, I think they fairly compare that to something around uh, you know, like a high end saloon car because the, the finish in the car, the, the amount of uh, extra stuff, the infotainment system is absolutely cutting edge, state of the art, the best you can get, it's really, really nicely fitted out. It's a very, very smooth running, easy to drive car, uh, you know, so I don't think you can, you can't really compare it to a sort of run of the mill saloon car of roughly the same size. This is, this is a fairly high end car, I mean, it's got everything that you can possibly shove in a car. And, more, and it's got really cool buttons on the front that, that aren't, aren't buttons. You just put your finger on the smooth area. So it'd be quite nice if you can clean it. Very easy to keep clean. I like all that. Lots, all the fittings, all the gubbins, brilliant. Very nice. I'm just, I'm like this because there's no difference. I've just been, I'm driving down a Dutch motorway and I looked at the, the battery indicator just now and it said two kilometers left on the battery. And then I didn't look because I was concentrating on the road ahead of me, as you should do. And now the engine started. I can't tell. There's no difference. Oh yeah, I can just about hear it. But the engine speed has no relationship to the speed on the road. It's just going like that because it's driving the generator. That is cool. Okay. I don't want to be a Ampera fanboy, but I might join the Ampera fanboy supporters club. This is. A very cool car. That is brilliant. Wow. I, I've only look, I've got range anxiety. I've only got 488 kilometres left till I run out of petrol. I could run out between petrol stations. Ah! <laughs> yeah, Ampera, nice car. Anyway, that's enough from me. Uh, join me again next time on Fully Charged.